The history of agriculture and how we make our food is a history of resolutions. How we have grown, raised, and stored our food has shaped our societies. I'm here to tell you the next shift in how we make our food, cellular agriculture, is already here, and it'll shape our future for the better. But first, we have to reject what we know as agriculture today. I want to convince you why you should join me on this journey to change how we make what we eat. I will probably die 10 years earlier than most of the people in this room because I regularly experienced starvation in childhood. You may look at me and assume how and why I starved as a child, but you probably be wrong. I grew up here in southern Alberta in a 100-year-old house on an isolated farm in deep poverty. We lived in one of the most efficient farming regions in the world. There were farms around us, but we couldn't farm like them. These are monocrop farms producing corn and cattle, but that efficiency meant nothing to us, so we starved. We lived inside a haven of productive, high-yield agriculture, and yet we're completely outside of it. Being on the outside has been a recurring theme in my life. Imagine you and your brother being the only people with your skin color for miles around. Imagine trying to survive as a child while your only parent has an extreme mental illness ignored by your own family. To say we were outsiders was an understatement. And how I ended up on this stage today is a long, circuitous story, punctuated by moments where I had to choose from the outside that trying to work from the inside wouldn't work for me. And at 15, I quit school and moved out and couldn't look back. Started by literally digging holes and flipping burgers, and I've had about 30 jobs ever since. I've been everything from a drywaller to an enterprise architect to a health researcher. And if there was one thing I kept doing, it's that I kept bashing my head against the wall of resistance I was facing every time I tried to go outside the boundaries of what I was supposed to follow. The rules of being efficient with grades, efficient with time, efficient with work, and everything else. But no matter how much I worked at it, I could never be efficient enough. But I found an industry that resonated with me and all the distrust I had built up against systems that are supposedly efficient. I decided to return to farming to fundamentally change it. I didn't want to farm corn or cattle. I wanted to grow food from cells and actually learned about this concept from a TEDx talk. And today, this industry is called cellular agriculture. What you're seeing on screen is real examples of stuff that's made with cells without needing the farm or the animal. And for those that are not familiar with it, it's taking cells from an animal and growing it on its own. So instead of needing to raise a living animal on a farm, you remove the farm and the animal itself and just grow the meat on its own. There is substantially reduced need for water and land. And because all this happens in a closed system, a massive reduction on pollution into the environment as well. The idea that food could come off the land, that food security and sovereignty could be made possible creating a fundamentally new food system, that you have a chance to truly break something considered so standardized, was irresistible. That someone like me could have a hand in preventing someone else growing up the way I did so that they did not t die 10 years early, I entered agriculture from the outside. And I'm not the only one who has or will suffer the negative effects of our current food system. What you see here is the flows of nutrient pollution into the Gulf causing a dead zone. But that's because efficiency goes in both ways. I can say with that with confidence, because our food system is really efficient, yes, it feeds us all every day. Because just as it is efficient as making beef, pork, and chicken, it is equally efficient in producing greenhouse gases, driving climate change, and producing runoff damaging waterways. But our food system doesn't need more efficiency. It needs resilience. It needs to reject how it's expected to work with the goal of efficiency and pivot, like I did, to other options and technologies 
for survival. Here's why I'm excited about cellular agriculture. These are images of real products at different stages, but exist right now, of animal products being made without the animal. Honey without the bees, fish without the fishing, chicken without the farm, beef without the cow, and the list goes on. Every animal product that can be produced is a potential target for replacement. And by harnessing the power of the cell to grow the food without the animal, it is a viable way to continue to make protein goods that would normally use animals, but to reduce the impact that it has on the environment without having to deprive yourself of it. Because the surest way to reduce pollution is to not put it into the environment in the first place. Now, I'm no longer in that old house on an isolated farm, but I am on this old planet, the only one harboring life known so far in the universe. And resilience for a person is the ability to recover from difficult experiences and setbacks, to adapt, move forward, and if lucky, experience growth. An individual's resilience is dictated by a combination of factors. Food is not that different. The farming that failed to feed me years ago isn't going to be with us in the future. And technologies like cellular agriculture, which you've seen real examples of, are here today. And I invite everyone who's interested in this technology, whether you're an entrepreneur, an investor, or even just a student, to reach out to these companies, because it's still quite new, because they need your help. Or come talk to me. Because we have a choice to pivot to a new path for the future of food, just like I did, the path of resilience. Thank you.